You're listening to Where You Live with Gene Sullivan. Uh, this the is theme Gene, is tough. This is Gene Sullivan. Uh, that you're listening to Where You Live, and we're trying to figure out the theme to uh, today's bumper music. And uh, I got to tell you, Chris, you got us stumped here. Uh, we go from piano music to yeah. a little bit of laid back hip hop. Do Do you know what that first the the first song was? Even I, I thought it sounded like Mister Rogers' Neighborhood. Mm. We still got one more segment. To okay, and out, that'll so. kind of put it all together. And hopefully, we can have so. a summary of review and. Yeah, maybe can we do that? Can we after we do the third one, we'll we'll play all three uh, quickly to see if we can do that. Absolutely. But uh, folks, we're talking to uh, today with uh, Eric Morwood with uh, True North Painting, and of course we are broadcasting from his uh, studios uh, here in uh, Egan. We're also brought to you by Extreme Exteriors and American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency. We're talking to Eric about how do you select uh, a contractor because there's this new story about two guys that. Uh, went to someone else who they thought was trusted uh, to have their roofs replaced. The guy ended up uh, back June taking uh, probably uh, 5000 apiece from these guys, and this was for like a $7,600 job. And then they haven't seen from him or heard from him since, and we were talking about how do you select a good contractor. And before the break, Eric, we were talking about Better Business Bureau, Angie's List. Um and uh, this is just a personal feeling that uh, that I have. I don't know if I have give the same credibility or credence to Angie's List that I do the Better Business Bureau because in Angie's List, if someone has uh, a negative review written about them, a contractor, a vendor, service provider, they don't necessarily have the opportunity to... Uh, share the uh, uh, the other side of the story where the Better Business Bureau seems that if they get an allegation, they give the contractor a chance to respond. Uh, what what do you think? Well, I think it's important for a consumer to never put all their stock in one source. You know, the Better yeah. Business Bureau is one source. Um, it can be a very good source. Um, and uh, Angie's List can also be a very good source. But uh, one thing to remember is if something looks perfect, that's when I start getting nervous. If somebody has all A's and there's nothing in their background that smells, I go either these guys aren't trying very hard, or, or there, uh, um, or or there's perhaps there are some uh, reviews that are not uh, genuine. Mm-hmm. Um, as you look through a company and, and you can see they did a great job here, they did a okay job there, they did a bad job but they made it right, and but then the majority of reviews are are good. You know you got a real company because real companies make real mistakes. It's how you handle them that's the most important. Because you're always dealing with real people. You're real people. And yeah. as long as humans are involved, yeah. mistakes are going to be made, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Well, it, let me tell you a little bit more about this story because this is something else. This Mr. Decker, so he took the uh, five, uh, five grand for a $7,600 job, and you said you thought that was too much, about 25%. Well, it depends about, on the trade. Okay. Um, in roofing, um, 50% isn't unreasonable. Okay. Um, but I would I would want to know when they're going to start. You know, okay. 50% two months in advance seems a little, you know, you're not buying the materials two months in advance. Um, you know, different companies um, uh, do it differently. Okay. They, so it is good to, I mean, so we should let our listeners know, you should expect that there's uh, going to be some money that's going to be asked mm-hmm. for as a down payment because- you're talking about a, a contractor who's expected to buy materials, mm-hmm. and there's a big outlay of cash right there, isn't there? Not all contractors are trustworthy, but not all customers are trustworthy either. And yeah. so a contractor has to be careful. Um, you know, They can't necessarily do the due diligence on the customer mm-hmm. the way the customer can do due diligence on themselves so, or on, on the contractor. So you know, I, I think it's reasonable to ask for uh, a, a small amount to get you on the schedule, uh-huh. uh, perhaps maybe uh, an additional schedule amount. Schedule payment. Schedule payment when you start. Okay. It, it all depends on the length. Okay. Well, here, here's what happened. Uh, so this guy took five grand a piece from these two guys. Hasn't been heard of since. Uh, he gave uh, proof of insurance, but now because there was these delays for a number of months, one of the guys finally figures out, oh, why don't I call on this? And he finds out that the insurance policy 
had been canceled over a year ago. <laughs> so before they gave the down payment. Um, before he gave the down payment. Well, there they actually have a new argument, um, not just failure to fulfill a contract, even though verbal. Mm -hmm. He's also representing that he has insurance. So that would be a part of the decision-making process for these guys, which it also could be considered intent to defraud. And it is. According to uh, the state of New York, uh, that's going to be apparently a new charge. You're very right uh, to Mr. Decker now, because... um, The new charge is possession of a forged instrument showing an insurance policy that was not valid is uh, something that is considered a felony in the state of uh, New York. Carries a maximum of a seven-year possible sentence. Here's the other things we find out from Mr. about Mr. Decker. Uh, Two complaints were filed against the New York Attorney General's office. Mr. Decker was arrested in 1994 and sentenced to two to four years in prison for grand larceny. In 2002, the attorney general took him to court again, charging him with repeated fraud and deceptive conduct, among other charges. And that led to a settlement in 2004 where the judge issued a consent order saying Mr. Decker is permanently barred from doing business at all as a contractor. Uh, he's not to be. He's not allowed to do uh, to do this business in the state. But in 2005, uh, he was taken away in handcuffs once again uh, in court, sentenced to six months in jail for violating that order. And so now you have all these years later, you've got a contractor. He's still out on the streets. He's still doing this. How does this happen? <laughs> well. Well, I think we there's know a, how it lot, happens. There's a lot to that question. <laughs> we know how it happens. We have a guy who who has uh, apparently no uh, no uh, ethical no respect uh, for the law or yeah. And the poor state trooper who referred this guy to the neighbors, you know, he's caught in the middle of it. I'm sure he never he didn't he, know that. He probably feels like oh, just an idiot. Yeah, for and doing that. the hard thing for the consumer is it would be pretty unusual for a consumer to go that deep. There's one bit of information in there, though, that would have been very reasonable and at their fingertips, and that would be checking on his license. In order to do, this guy was a roofer, yeah. um, seeing if somebody's appropriately licensed in the state that they're offering to do services, that's fairly easy. You can go onto the website. You can, uh, let's see, in, in uh, Minnesota, it'd be under the, uh, it'd be under the. Uh, well, the Department of Commerce would uh, be, uh, they. It's under the Secretary of State. It used to be Department of Labor and Industry. Uh, now it's Secretary of State, I believe. Well, yes, they, they have a registration for uh, businesses, corporations, uh, for a, a lot of, a lot of uh, legal entities, knowing who, who's the person that you're dealing with, because if you have a, a, the name of a company, you don't necessarily know who the owners are, and so all of that is registered with the, the state. Uh, with the state where they uh, preside and do business. Yeah, and it's different per state, so okay. that would be something for them to look well, up. You know, what's interesting is uh, in this story, they uh, talked to the assistant attorney general, a woman by the name of Amy Shallop, and uh, th- she was asked uh, the question, uh, is there anything to inform consumers uh, of the fact that uh, guys like Decker has been barred? And like you said, you said yes, uh, you can attack, you can check with the attorney general's office. Yeah, he would, and he would. You could, and uh, you can. Uh, uh, this is where Better Business Bureau actually would serve a purpose, um, because in you know this guy has his a history of problems. There absolutely would have been record mm-hmm. at the Better Business Bureau of perhaps even resolved complaints. But at least you would see that there is a, a non perfect history. Whereas you take a service like uh, Service Magic or uh, Angie's List, he actually could have an A rating easily on Angie's List because yeah. Angie's they wouldn't necessarily get involved in the legal aspects. It's all yeah. homeowner reviews. And if uh, he had one person who did a great job, he would have one review, and it would be a great job. Correct. And, and I'm not uh, I'm not down on Angie's. I think it yeah. serves a purpose. I, but I think it's really important to know that. Just because somebody has an A rating on one website and another website and better business, there, there are, um, you know, checking with the, uh, um, checking on their licenses yeah. would be a very good. So like, like you said, the bottom line is 
uh, to vet a con- contractor or someone who's going to do business, it's the more sources you check, the better confidence that you can have. And the best source is compare them with other contractors. Yeah. If you have three contractors, two contractors, you can, you, you'll can you see one of them talks about the license, one of them doesn't. One of them talks about their A rating, one of them doesn't. It's very easy once you have You're right. Prepared. It allows you to raise questions and say, oh, what are these other things that I should be considering? The good ones will raise questions for you. That's that's a good point. I, I, th- I think that's so true. And in this particular case, it looks like the, the real uh, crux of what happened in this situation were two people who were anxious to get some work done but really didn't do the due diligence needed to kind of vet the contractor. They were probably thinking that they worked this contractor for some neighborhood deal and they got a big discount as long as they gave a big down payment. Everything's <sighs> all good in the hood. Oh, yeah. Boy, I tell oh, you. Oh, did we work that contractor over, the two of us? We got a heck of a deal. We Okay, we had to put a little more up front, but we got a great deal because both of us are going with the same guy. Yeah, a, a great deal, yeah. Well, unfortunately, that's what uh, happened here in this particular case. Well, I hope uh, there can be uh, something that... Uh, some uh, justice that'll happen for these two gentlemen. Unfortunately, I think the only thing that they have looking uh, to look forward to is uh, maybe more jail time for Mr. Decker here uh, in the uh, short term. Well, hey, we need to take a break. Uh, We got one more segment to figure out what the theme of the bumper music is and a lot more questions to ask Eric Morrud about what is great customer service when we come back. 